There's lots of different ways we can organize our storage, but fortunately, there's only three main ways in which we're going to access that storage. We're actually going to be hitting that storage to read stuff or to write stuff. And we say three main methods from a very high level overview. In this nugget, we'll take a look at block versus file versus object level data access. This issue between block-based storage and file-based storage tends to give students fits. And I think it's because the descriptions they read are always so abstract, so, so, so filled with techno babble. But it doesn't need to be that hard at all. Over here on the left, I've drawn block storage. Over here on the right, I have drawn file-based storage. So we can start to see differences right away as we look at this. Here's our compute resources. And then down here, we obviously have our storage resources. So notice a key difference. Where is the file system intelligence? Well, in block-based, it's really close to the app. Then we have some network system, and then we have the storage. Notice here in file-based, away from the app, way down in the storage infrastructure, is the file system. So file system intelligence is part of the actual storage in a file-based system. This tends to place more overhead on the storage system as it's having to take care of that file system intelligence. Down here, we have just kind of what we refer to as raw storage, and the file system intelligence is part of the compute resources that's offloaded onto the compute resources. So you might wonder, why in the world would we ever want file-based storage? I mean, if there's more overhead, if there's more, you know, issues on that side that the storage has to deal with, it's probably going to be slower, and, and we don't want that. Well, it turns out that the the driving force behind that file-based storage is the fact that it is going to be simple to implement. What would be an example of file-based storage? It would be a network access or network attached storage situation, a NAS storage situation. In Windows, we often know this as the common internet file system. In Unix, we would know this as NFS. And if you've ever set up one of these systems, yes, it can be very, very easy to do. As a matter of fact, I set one up in the home. I purchased a NAS. It was very inexpensive. It attached to my network in a very simple manner. In fact, there, there's obviously there's wireless ones now. And then you're setting up shares on that from your Windows system. In fact, it does it all for you because it's maintaining its file system for you. And then you are transferring files to that device literally within minutes after unboxing that particular device. So we have a very, very simple situation in the file-based storage arena. What about our block-based storage? Well, again, we call it the raw storage that's out there, and we organize it into logical volumes on our compute resources so that they can use it. And this is the type of access we have in direct attached storage or the more complex 
storage area network environment. And while this is known for its simplicity, the block-based file access approach is known for its flexibility extremely flexible how you're going to appropriate the storage when you do something complex like a storage area network. Why wouldn't we always do this if it's so flexible, so fast, so cool? Well, because as we know, a storage area network is going to be much more complicated for us and potentially expensive for us when we compare it especially to a network attached storage environment. Now there is a new game in town. Around 1996, we had a lot of academic work going on in an area called object-based storage. And the idea with object based storage is that all of our stored things are going to be considered objects and they can be identified by a unique object identifier. And what's cool is, is that we can store an object and then if that object is going to be used by a lot of different machines, which always ends up happening. Think about all these different machines that are all running. Here we have three different machines and they're all running Windows 8. Heaven forbid. <laughs> no, just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding, Microsoft. So they're all running Windows 8. And each one of these has obviously X, Y, and Z files that make that particular operating system work. And there's going to be in the storage system, those X, Y, and Z files, we can do deduplication easily with object-based storage. And we can make sure there's one copy of those for each of these devices to call upon. So deduplication is going to be something that we do heavily in an object-based storage environment. And obviously, by the way, while we have one copy of these, we would also have a backup copy of those files to ensure against disaster recovery and things of that nature. By the way, you can do deduplication as I described it in both the block-based environment and the file-based environment, but object-based storage is going to bring concepts like that to the forefront of our working with storage. Something else that we have with object-based storage, by the way, is we have this concept of metadata. So we have metadata that is part of the storage system that will allow for better indexing, better overall management of the stuff that makes up the data we store in our organization. So in this nugget, we've taken a look at block-based file storage, at file-based file storage or data access, and then we've taken a look at the revolutionary new object-based approach. One of the skills that I want you to possess is to very easily discuss what particular category a particular technology would be in. As a matter of fact, why don't we run through a couple of sample questions right now on this very fact? Fiber channel is often used in what type of data access method? File-based, block-based, object-based, or third-based? <laughs> Okay, you may want to pause the video right here 
and then return to this nugget in order for me to discuss my approach to answering this in the exam. Go ahead and pause right now if you're interested. Well, welcome back to this nugget, and we are going to answer this question. We're going to go through what I would do in the exam environment. First of all, there's no such thing as third-based. Your exam author clearly could not think of a fourth option, so they put in this silly option of third-based. Now, I have bad news for you. The EMC exam will not do this because their exam authors think of silly things to ask for a fourth option that's not quite as silly as mine. Also, by the way, you can tell I have the upcoming baseball season on the brain right now. Okay, so of the valid options, file-based, block-based, and object-based, which is it? Well, one of the things that we discussed in this nugget was the fact that we have storage area networking as an option. And guess what? For storage area networking, there's two main protocols we see today to make it happen. There is iSCSI. Let me try that all over again. Ready? I-S-C-S-I. I. That's always been very difficult for me to write. And another popular option is fiber channel. Aha! So we've just kind of arrived at a clue here. Fiber channel, often used in storage area networking. So the type of data access method that that would be, dun dun dun, is block based. So all we got to be able to do here is associate fiber channel with the storage area network that will allow us to arrive at the correct answer of block based now let's use this sample question to review another key fact for file based we said that tended to be used in like a nas environment and remember what protocols we said we might see there? Things like SIFs and the network file system would be options of particular protocols that we would find in a file-based system. And then in an exam environment, a clue on the object-based might be something like the word metadata. Because we know in an object-based system, metadata is going to be stored to provide particular information about that object so it can be easily found, easily indexed, easily implemented in a deduplication system in that particular world. So block level versus file level versus object level data access. While some try and make this very complex, I hope you've seen in this nugget how it can be fun and easy. I sure hope this nugget was informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.